welcome to this product demonstration and training on how to terminate fiber optic cable with Corning Unicam connectors. I'll be demonstrating an SC plug termination on both a jacketed and a tight buffered fiber and uh, going through the different features of this toolkit and what it can do for you. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, talk about the connectors themselves. Connectors come two ways, individually bagged with some templates on them for doing strips and stuff, or you can buy them in a 25-piece tackle box that has all the components for them. Uh, one word of warning on the tackle box is it is only made for what we call distribution fiber, so you can't use the tackle box on breakout fiber. Um, I'm going to be doing a assembly style single fiber cable jacketed. I have tied a knot in one end on this for training purposes only just so I don't pull the fiber out. Fiber does slide very easily inside the jacket when you don't have both ends uh, fixed. So first step with the Corning kit is to prepare the connector. So what I'm going to do is open the connector, have my piece parts in here. I've got two different size boots. One is for jacketed fiber, one is for tight buffered fiber. In this case I will be using the jacketed fiber. I will not be using the tight buffered fiber. I've got a copper crimp ring and I've got the connector body itself with the shroud. So I'll separate the shroud, the crimp ring, I'll place the connector down for a minute and I'll prepare my tool. This tool has a virtual visual fault locator, a VFL, built into it, has the uh, carriage for holding the connector and then you've got your cam when you press pop the cam the connector. What I'm going to do is prepare the connector first, so first step is turn the tool on, got my green light. Then I'll take the connector. The first step I'm going to do is remove the dust caps, front and rear. So the rear dust cap, and I'll take the front dust cap off. And after I take the front dust cap off, I want to make very sure I do not touch that end face. I do not want to have any sort of skin oil, contaminant, dust on it, anything like that. Most fiber network failures are caused by end face contamination. I'll take this connector. I'll press the load bar to get it up out of the way. I'll lay the connector down, let the feed tube feed through the bottom, and then I'll let the load bar drop. I'll double check to make sure my lead tube is sticking out the bottom, close the VFL and lock it all the way down. And then I'll close the, kick the tool. If this yellow light is not flashing, that means everything's good to go. I'll do a quick demonstration to show you what happens if you don't do it right. Let's say I just drop the VFL and I don't actually lock it down. I press this, I get the flashing yellow light. That tells me something's wrong and the tool's not ready. The only way to reset the tool is turn it off, turn it on again, lock this all the way down, close it. No yellow light means the tool's ready to go. So now I can lay my tool aside while I prep my cable. Prepping the cable with the Corning system, they have a little template inside the actual toolkit itself with measurements. The bag also has its own measurements too, so you can use either template. Uh, because I have the toolkit, I'm going to go ahead and use the plastic one. First step in the cable preparation is going to be to let your boot up the cable. So you have to slide the boot up the cable. If you forget to do the boot, it gets very frustrating when you try to terminate the connector. Then I'm going to make two marks on the cable with this template. I'm going to go ahead and mark it at 40 millimeters, and I'm going to mark it at 53 millimeters. So two marks on the jacket for the SC connector. I've got a tri-hole stripping tool here that strips off jacket, strips off primary buffer, and strips off secondary buffer. I'm going to go ahead and use the jacket strip on the first mark. You just crimp and pull, comes off. I'll separate my strength members from the actual fiber itself. I'll go ahead and take a pair of scissors, they have to be special scissors to cut Kevlar. Strip off the Kevlar strength members. Then I'll go ahead and strip the jacket again at the second notch I made. And now I do not cut off the strength members here. Instead, I take my copper tube. It's got two sides. One side has a chamfer in it. One side's flat. The chamfered side facing down, I'm going to use that to actually as a tool to move the strength members and hold them back. Next step is to mark the buffer at 11 millimeters. So I'm going to come down here from the edge of the jacket, mark it 11 millimeters. And now I'm ready to pull off what we call the secondary buffer. This white buffer here is secondary buffer. With the second hole in the strip tool here, I'm going to take this off in small quarter inch bites. If you're actually terminating corning cable, they have a patent under there where there's a special Teflon film and you can crimp and pull the whole thing off in one slug, but chances are you might not have corning fiber, so you need to do it in small bites. So first step is to grab that copper tube and the buffered fiber tightly so they don't move, 
and then you'll just do measured bytes on the buffer. Go all the way back to the mark, the 11 millimeter mark. Don't try to pull off too much or else you might break the fiber. Now that I've pulled that off, what I have left here is actually called the primary buffer. This is a UV cured acrylic, almost like a super glue uh, powder that's been heat treated onto there. I used the final small cavity on the tri-hole strip tool to take that off. So I'll lay this in here nice and perpendicular. I don't want to be at an angle like this or like this or I'll break the fiber. Nice and perpendicular and just do quarter inch bites, almost the same methodology as you did with the initial secondary buffer and just go all the way back to the jacket. And now I've left with my fiber all stripped. So next step at this point is to clean the fiber. So inside the fiber cleaning kit is a fiber optic cleaning fluid. It's basically a 91% or better isopropyl alcohol. I'll take one of these lint-free cloths, kind of wet it. And my next step is going to be to lay this over the fiber. You want to come from the top side, squeeze hard and pull. I want to do it twice and you should get a good squeak. Nice good squeak out of it. Now this fiber is now ready for cleaving. The cleave tool with the corning kit is a very simple uh, device. There's two sides to this template here. You have a 900 micron buffer side and a jacketed side. We're doing jacketed fiber so we're going to use the jacketed side. I lay this in here. I'll take these two buttons on the side here and press both of them. This opens the tool up and allows the fiber to be inserted. I insert the fiber into the tool until it bottoms out and I release both buttons. Then holding the fiber, press the red button once and release it. Then press the blue button very firmly. This cleaves the fiber. Now I press the black button and remove the fiber. And you should have a cleave length of approximately eight and a half millimeters. You do not want to touch the fiber at this point. This is a nicely clean fiber ready for insertion into the tool. The tool itself is holding the glass shard safely in place. You would press the red button, grab the shard, pull it out, and then discard it. Now with the tool that we prepared earlier, I'm going to go ahead and insert the fiber into the lead-in tube. I'm going to have to do it from my angle here because I have to see it. And I seat it all the way up till it's seated. Should be about two millimeters of white buffer still showing which there is, and you can see the fiber is lit up. That means that the two end faces inside are coupled together. Now I'm going to press this button here, which is the camming operation. If I get a green light, that means my connection is good. There's no light escaping and I have a good termination. If I get a red light, then I want to press this black button to release the cam and then go ahead and try it again and try re-terminating again. If you still get a red light after a couple tries, then something has broken off inside your connector and you probably need to replace your connector. If you get the green light though, you're good to go. So once I get the green light, then I can crimp this. So this is a crimping tool right here for the lead-in tube. I'm going to do a 180 degree turn and now it's, it's crimped. So now I can go ahead and take the connector out of the tool. You want to lift the tool up. You want to support the uh, load bar from moving and push the VFL out of the way. Then you can press your load bar and remove your connector. Set the tool aside. You can press the uh, cam release button now to prepare it for the next connector too. Now with an SC connector, there's a few extra steps of uh, assembly that are required. So one is I'm going to pull this copper tube back and then push it forward. I'm going to take my crimp tool, which is actually hidden in a small compartment of the tool case here. Kind of can trick you to think you don't have a crimp tool. And I'm going to go ahead and crimp this uh, copper tube on the strength members. Notice it's not on the jacket, it's on the strength members. The reason why is you never pull fiber by the jacket, you always pull it by the strength members only. So in that case, this is following those fiber rules. I'll crimp it. So now my fiber connector is crimped. I'll take the boot and align it. So I'll slide it up over. There is some letters on the boot that say UC. You want to kind of Get this sliding over the copper tube very carefully, seat it all the way up. Make sure the UC is facing the same as the letters on the connector. Then you want to go ahead and put your dust cap on your connector to protect the end face. And the last step is going to be to assemble the shroud. So I'm going to go ahead and slide the shroud up. It'll click. 
and now that connector is fully terminated. So that completes a jacketed fiber termination. So if you were doing breakout fiber, this would be the proper procedure to follow to terminate a connector, SD connector, on this cable.